Hi, happy you're here. Get comfy and let's get started. Set Up My Grave, Season 2, Reflections, Chapter 22. Well, that's that. Be safe, son. Clay said, clasping his hands together. He turned towards his son, his eyebrows knitted together a bit as he put a hand on Gallon's shoulders. And remember our little talk, okay? He whispered. I got you, Dad. I'll be all right. Gallon promised. He gave his dad a hug and a pat on the back. Oh, where did the time go? You look so big now! Genesis exclaimed. He's always looked big to me, Genevieve chimed in, looking up at her brother. The family looked at each other, sharing a chuckle. They ended up in the schoolyard. The sun had gone down by now. They were ready to head back. Man, Arden, this is it, Gallon said. He leaned his head back slightly, looking up at the school, while he stood beside Arden. Arden stared ahead, pressing his lips together, eyes squinting slightly. He had plenty to keep him busy when he went back home. He knew that. He wouldn't even have time to miss Gallon. Sure himself. Hey, are you gonna be okay? Gallon questioned, voice a bit more hushed. Why wouldn't I be? Martin responded with. Gallon turned his gaze to look at him now. Martin refused to look back. He focused on the building structure. You haven't seemed like yourself for a while. You're not gonna be around anymore. I just think if you have anything you need to get off your chest, you should say it now. Gallon almost whispered to him. His family were still waiting to say their final goodbyes, but it was Gallon wanted to admit it with his best friend. I'll be alright too, Gallon. Or used his words back on him. He already made up in his mind he wasn't going to make a scene about the whole thing. Gallon was leaving, there was nothing he could do about it, regardless if he spoke up or not. It's time to hit the road! We all need to get home and get some sleep. Honey spoke up as he walked over. Gallon put on a half smile. Arnold frowned, seemed to mouth something at him. The look on his face showed it was meant to be comforting. Arnold could not remember what it was. He mainly tried to focus on the claim. He wanted to get home as well. He was exhausted in every way. I'm sleepy. Jennifer mentioned yawning. She gingerly placed her hand in Gallon's trying to guide him to the car. Oh, honey, no more playing with Gallon. It's time to go home. Genesis told her, getting their hands apart. Huh? Isn't Gallon coming home with us? Genevieve asked, rubbing her eyes. Her parents showed her look broke back at her. He's at school now, honey. We told you that. Lane said gently. But you don't go to school at night time, Genevieve told them in confusion. Honey, this place is a lot further from our home. Gal won't be coming home every day after school anymore, Genesis confessed. What? Genevieve gasped. It's okay, Jenny. We can call each other all the time. Gal quickly jumped in. Genevieve looked up at her parents to her brother. Her face started to scrunch up as her breathing picked up. Oh dear, don't get upset. Genesis soothed, laying down to hug her. You'll be fine, Jenny. I can come visit sometimes too. Gallon continued trying to calm her down. He bent down to hug her along with his mother. Genevieve immediately jumped into his arms, full on crying now. Her little body was shaking as tears swept down her face. Arnie tensed up seeing that. His shoulders got tight and his hands clenched a fist in his pockets. He was unsure of what to do, so he tried to stay out of the way. You won't be home for dinner? We can't play after school anymore? Genevieve whined. Honey, you'll be going to a new school too. You'll have so much fun and meet so many new friends. Lane piped up. But I don't want new friends. I want my best friend. Genevieve cried out. Gallon wiped his own eyes briefly while still rocking Genevieve in his arms. He gently bit his lip and tried to keep a certain bounce in his voice, but it hurt seeing her so upset. Arden eyed them on the sidelines, his feet glued to the ground, his gaze frozen on Genevieve mainly. The McKinneys were such a tight-knit family. He's seen their bond displayed numerous times over the years, primarily on joyous occasions. And while this wasn't meant to be anything but another heartwarming moment for them, Genevieve's open display of distress about her brother leaving Shows the other side of the happy-go-lucky family. They're empathetic and patient with each other. So much, Arnold caught his best friend softly tearing up along with his sister. He knew Gal was nervous about leaving, but those tears seemed out of pure sympathy for her. I'll still be your best friend wherever I go, Jenny. It'll all work out. You'll miss me less and less once we get used to this change. Gal was sure while he cradled her. His mom and dad stood beside him, hung both their children. I don't want to miss you ever. I want you with me, Genevieve blubbered, squeezing him as tight as her little arms could. 
Seeing her like that, Arden couldn't help but reminisce on memories with his own brother. Did he ever hug him like that? Openly show him how much he cared for him? Maybe when they were children, before the wedge, before the ego grew. Arden thought back to a time where he wished he had have hugged his brother. Maybe even thanked him but didn't. He couldn't notice the little things then like he started to now. Chatter echoed from either side of Arden. Laughing, screams, everything was so loud. Finally stepping out of the building, the sound had a chance to disperse a little. Arden kept his gaze focused forwards, absolutely adjusting his backpack as he trudged the crowd. Most people were too interested in themselves and their friends to even notice him much. The ones that did would just whisper out how odd he looked. That day they had to stay a little longer at school for an event. It wasn't very much time, but they were required to tell their parents about it in advance, so they'd know when to pick them up. Arn plopped himself in his backpack on one of the school's benches. Most of them were covered in graffiti and worn out, but it beat standing up while he waited. Hey, do you want to come over this weekend? A shadow was cast over Arn in its reading material. Arn glanced up, flopping his hair out of his face a little. Gallon smiled down at him. He pulled himself away from the other students finally and seeked Arden out. Sure, if I'm not busy, Arden replied. Okay, ask my mom if you can stay over, Gallon agreed. I got a new video game too. We'll have to be quiet for at least an hour though. That's when the baby has her nap. Gallon rambled on, slightly swinging his backpack as he stood. Has she stopped yanking stuff yet? Arden frowned. No, actually she recently snatched my fork out of my hand when I wasn't expecting it. I don't think she's ever going to stop stealing from me. Gallon laughed. Well, Arn was interrupted when Gallon's dad drove up honking. <laughs> oh, I gotta go. See you this weekend? Gallon turned to confirm. This weekend, Arn agreed smiling. Gallon nodded before racing off. Arn watched him immediately start talking with the dad as he got in the car and buckled up. He watched a lot of other kids fall into their parents' vehicles. When Arn started paying attention to other people's conversations and which cars looked decent or beat up, it was when he realized he'd been sitting down there for a long time. Rose is right. He told his parents when to pick him up. It was strange just sitting there, and he was sure it gave his classmates more material to whisper about him. He didn't much enjoy school, but today was particularly not going well for him. He tried to participate more in class that day, but it turned out to be a mistake. As time went on, he'd gone from being timid, but still trying to be social, to being even more quiet as he was getting older. But he looked at people like Gallon and his older brother. They talked a lot and had friends. It seemed no one was interested in being his friend, though. Arn decided maybe he needed to be more engaged in what others liked. So in the middle of class, he raised his hand and answered a question. His voice wasn't as clear as he hoped. But to make it worse, the teacher didn't just take his answer and move on. She had to be annoying about it, because he didn't answer it perfectly, telling him he was so close. The perkiness sounded like she was mocking him and to grind it in even more. She even told him that maybe if he participated more, he'd be more accurate. It was a jab at him. At least Arna felt like it had been. Arna scrunched up on that bench, just thinking of it left him feeling sour. School was so annoying and draining, and now he was here on some bench. There was no way his parents just forgot him. Yet here he was, seeing everyone else go home with their families. He felt so awkward and irritated. He just wanted to go home even thought about walking there himself. He even toyed with going back into school and using a phone, so he didn't have his own to call anyone. Neither of those sound like a good idea. He didn't want any teacher's help, and the road at home looked dark and uninviting. He wasn't even sure if he knew exactly how to get there. A rumble and whoosh of a car driving by stormy wagon. He slowly brought his feet up on that bench, bringing his knees to himself, clutching his backpack tightly. There's no reason to panic. It was just dark, with strangers driving around. He saw some people start to roam the street, looking out of it, mumbling to themselves. The street lights threatening to flicker on, a distant howl of some animal. His parents, not realizing he wasn't there for some reason. I'm fine, Arden told himself. He wasn't some little kid anymore. He can handle this. A loud noise Arden couldn't decipher suddenly whipped through his ears, making him look up, hanging his head down while he clutched his knees. A rumble of tire on the street accompanied the sounds that rolled up towards him. When it closed the distance, he realized the loud thumping noise was music turned up. Arden was too close to the place to the music. Who was that coming up so close to him? He made a movement to get off the bench, but froze again when the car got too close and its light shined on him. 
His chest began heaving up and down while his eyes started to burn. The headlights flickered on and off at him. Arden gritted his teeth, feeling his body began jittering off of pure nerves. He didn't know what to do. It was like a deer in headlights. He just stared. Eyes slightly squinted. Are you going to get in, or are we going to keep staring at each other lovingly all night? Finally, the music was lower, and the window was rolled down. Arden blinked his eyes slowly, swiftly wiping at them. Where's Mom? Arden finally questioned with unsurety in his voice. He'd speak to Reed, but only when he really needed to. His lifestyle wasn't anything he agreed with, and as he was getting older, he felt like he was discovering more about himself. And with what had transpired between them, he figured he needed to be more self-sufficient anyway. People didn't seem to like him much, so what? He had more time to focus on his own morals. Even at the age he was, he began thinking, maybe he was more intelligent than his peers. That's why they didn't like him. That's why his teachers felt the need to correct him. They were threatened. Oh, Mom? She's in Italy having drinks with her friends. She's at home, duh! We replied sarcastically. Arn used to think his slick way of speaking was funny sometimes. With other input and their disagreement that had been lasting, he was starting to find it annoying, just like his teachers, just like other kids at school. Come on, get in, Reed said, waving him over. Arn ran over there and put his book bag and himself in the car. Does she send you to get me, or is this just an excuse to drive around? Or next. He intended to solve small army, much like Reed, but it came out almost like a genuine question. Be quiet, Arn, you talk too much. Let me drive. Reed waved in his face a bit, causing Arn to frown and slap at him. I talk too much? You're too broody, just like Dad says. Or replied nastily. The day had drained him. He was going through so many thoughts and emotions just earlier, he came out without him thinking about it. Every talk, or rather, argument they had seemed to have specks of their bigger argument looming over it. Arn hadn't learned to filter it. As far as he was concerned, they still had a silent fight going on. Reed picked him up, sure, but didn't make his attitude okay. Besides, he was doing it because he was told to, most likely. Didn't I tell you to shut up? Reed groaned after a pause of silence. Clearly, he realized Arn's words weren't by accident. He was bringing it up. Reed settled on telling him to shut up. Any further, he'd be upset all over again. He hated thinking about that day. He'd rather pretend it didn't happen. Reed wasn't any better at controlling himself either. They were both still too young. 